Okay, now this is our final APA exercise, five point exercise to get you primed and ready to write your APA papers. Now I've mentioned before that it's fine with me if you copy and paste the site this um, function out of EBSCOhost or whatever. That's fine with me if you copy and paste, but you are responsible for knowing correct APA format for your references. So I've designed project three to give you practice in formatting references that I know the format for, like I know what you're citing. So your task is to use this information. Here is the information that you'll use for all of the formats. So do not, do not go and find a book, a journal article, and an online publication. Do not. You are going to use this information. The authors are I am Mo and you are Curly. The title is If You Can't Teach, I Don't Learn, and the date of publication is February 32nd, 2018. Okay. Now, in case you're not familiar with APA format, I've uh, provided for you this OWL website. Uh, our library has some materials also. OWL I like because they know that a lot of people around the country use them and so they keep it really updated. And so um, that's why I've linked OWL for you. It has all sorts of formatting issues about all sorts of things having to do with APA. So this is a good resource for you. It has things like headings, um, style, all sorts of things that are um, could be helpful for you. What I'm going to focus on for today is the stuff that will help you with references. Okay, so your task is to create a book, a journal article, and an online publication using these pieces of information plus the additional information I've provided down here. So here's the information that you'll use for all the formats. Here are the formats you will insert that information into. I've included additional information for the formats as necessary so you can complete the citations. I've made each reference format a hyperlink to the proper page for style instructions. Okay, so the first task is to create a book reference using the, this information. These are the authors. This is the title of the book. This is the date of publication. Good enough for me and son's publishers located in an old cowboy shack in Dimebox, Texas. So you can go ahead and click this link it tells you the basic format for books. Scroll down a little bit. The basic format is it's supposed to go author, comma, space, first initial dot, space, middle initial dot, space, parenthesis, year of publication. I've given you some additional information you don't need. Parentheses, dot, space, italicized, title of the work with only the main first word capitalized. Then the location, colon, space, publisher, not in italics. So then they've given you an example, and this one has two authors, which is helpful to you since you have two authors. And you'll notice the presence of this comma and the presence of this ampersand. Okay, so you're going to use mo comma i dot space m dot space comma ampersand curly comma space u dot space r dot space right that's what you're going to be doing to this so you have to you're going to have to manipulate the materials to get it into the format insert the year fix there's some errors here as far as the format, so make sure that it's following the book title style, right? What should it look like? Okay, now here's a good question. See how they show a dot here? And see how the title has an exclamation point on it? Exclamation points are very unusual in titles of, of works, but question marks are not. And so I, I thought, exclamation point, fine. Any additional punctuation mark, exclamation point, question mark, 
you don't do two pieces of uh, punctuation in a row. So since this title includes an exclamation point, you do not need the dot. EBSCOhost doesn't seem to know that, so be careful when you're copying things from EBSCOhost. And then I've given you the name of the publishers and the location. So you have what you need to do the book. Now for a journal article, here's the basic form. So you insert your author's information here. It only asks for the year, right? Title of article. Now you'll notice that one's not out. It's not um, italicized, but it follows the same basic format that the book had. But then now what is in italics is the, the title of the journal, the volume number, and then in parentheses is the issue number with, without being italicized, and then just the pages. I did not provide you with a DOI, so you don't need to have this part. Okay, now let's look at our prompt again because it says Journal of Irresponsible Publishing. Okay, so you know what journal it came from. This is the title of the work, so that's the name of the article. This is the name of the journal. It's Volume 9, Issue 9. Okay, so you know that. Here's our page range, 345 to 877. And then I gave you the instruction that this journal paginates by issue. Okay, that must be relevant, right? So this article this journal paginates by volume. Oh look, article and journal paginated by, by volume. This paginates by issue. Okay, okay, so what am I looking for? Oh, article and journal paginated by issue. So you'll notice the one thing that differs is, see the volume here, 55? See the volume here, 15, with the issue included? So follow the correct format. And then please note, it, there's no PP, no PG, no anything. It's just the page range. So insert that material into the journal style. And then same thing here. Now we're going to do an online periodical. So, and by the way, even though this activates as a hyperlink, I, I made it up. So don't go looking for it. <laughs> I invented all this junk. There's no such thing as a journal of irresponsible publishing either. Um, I've made all this stuff up. So article from an online periodical, click on the link, it tells you, now, okay, this is a really good time to remind you the difference between online, because our library is online, versus online, the only way you can get this information is by going to a URL. Anything you find in EBSCO host or ProQuest that's just normal library stuff. Anything that you have to go to something like the uh, badeducators.com to find, that would be an online periodical. That would be something that has to be cited in this style. Um, some of you might go to the Centers for Disease Control to find data, or some of you might go to um, the NIH to get information. Something like that. That's going to be something that would be a URL. So that's why I'm, I'm showing you how to do this. Okay, so I've given you the URL. The journal is still the same journal name, Journal of Irresponsible Publishing. It's still Volume 9, Issue 9. So when we go here, it tells us again, same, you'll notice all this is always the same. So being a big fan of um, saving labor, I would once I've got the format correct, I would just copy it three times for the three styles. That's what I would do. Same thing here, we got the title of the article. It follows the same procedure. Title of the online periodical follows the same procedure, right? So whatever you can copy, go ahead and do it. Um, volume number and issue number if available. What you'll be adding here is the retrieved from part with the URL. And then here it shows um, date of publication. Some students have incorrectly interpreted that to mean date that includes um, month, but then if you go down here and look at this, it, you'll see it just has the year. So when it says date of publication, it still just means year. When you're confused, if you're not sure on something, always read what it says up here because it gives you the explanation. So your submission for this homework will have three lines on it three three um, things. This material organized in a book reference, 
this material organized in a journal article as if you got it from a regular library and then this organized again as if it's coming from a journal that's only published online. All right, so don't make more work for yourself. Do not go find anything else. You're exclusively working within this material, okay? If you have any questions, please let me know and I will clarify. All right, have fun with this.